Question. How much simpler would it be if you knew someone that could give you information of what to expect when you land in your Muslim country or your country of Hijra? Or they gave you useful information and tips of things you should know before you leave. Well, if you follow the advice I'm going to give you in this video, your hijra just got that much easier. I'm going to talk about in this video three things that you need to make sure you take with you before you leave to make hijra. But before I do that, can you do me a favor? Please hit the like button and the subscribe button. It helps the algorithm and it helps other people get a chance to watch the information in the video. Diving right in. The first thing you want to take, and these are actually in no particular order, you want to see if you can take or request a copy of all, and I mean all, of your medical records, okay? Either have them put on a flash drive so that you can give that to the doctors when you get to your next country, uh, or have it put on a CD, okay, on some type of electronic medium, okay? Um, because you want to take these things with you because when you go to doctors, if you have special conditions or you have a medical history of some kind, uh, the doctors that you go to don't know anything about you. And so many of them will, you know, make suggestions of this treatment or that treatment or this medication, that medication. And from your history, you know the things that worked and didn't work and so forth. Um, and so that's going to save a lot of time and a lot of aggravation because everybody thinks they know what's going on. You know, a lot of the doctors in the Middle East, they seem they have a, a bit of a complex in, in that they think they know everything they need to, to prescribe for you. You know you and your history and your body and what works and what didn't work and, you know, all of those things. So as, as much as you can, get a, a copy of your medical reports from your, um, from your primary care provider or your family doctor or whatever you call him, your GP or whatever. Make sure that you have that before you leave in some kind of digital form. I wouldn't necessarily suggest paper form because paper is really just another thing that can get lost. Okay, so you just, you don't want that. It's something that's perishable. It can be destroyed or damaged or burnt or anything. So get something in an electronic medium. This may take you a while in terms of you know getting the clearance from the secretary because she has to check with the doctor or there may be a policy. But just let them know you're going to be traveling and you're going to need this information and get as much of it as you can for yourself. Get it for your children um, and, and 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 that way you have a running history. So that when you hit the ground there, you already know if, if I need to do such and such, here's a copy of my medical records so you can see what's going on. And sometimes you might wind up getting better treatment in the in the country that you're going to because you may not have as many restrictions insurance-wise. So there may have been uh, procedures or medications that you could take that would that would help your situation, but you live in a country where the insurance is not going to cover it because they don't feel it's medically necessary. Okay. You might not face that restriction um, or you might not. Yeah, you might not face that restriction in the country that you go to because, you know, sometimes the, the procedures are a little bit more. Um, they're, they're a little less complicated. OK, if you need something and this is the thing that's going to help you and you can justify that, then you probably won't have a problem getting those kind of things. Um, and also you're going to find some some relief in terms of the uh, some of the medications that you take other than narcotics. Uh, a lot of those things that you have to have a prescription for, you can actually get them over the counter in as many quantities as you want. So we're talking about things like high blood pressure, high blood pressure medication, uh, anti-inflammatories, uh, uh, what they call them, uh, inhibitors, like like anti-inflammatories and stuff like that. Uh, NASIC, non 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 steroidal anti-inflammatory inhibitors. Uh, some of those things, for example, Voltrin or maybe 600 to 800 milligram Motrin or 600 milligram Motrin uh, or other things that are going to help your condition. Buterol, if you have asthma, or albuterol, uh, you might need a prescription for, but you may not need that in the States. Just go to the counter, to the counter of the pharmacy that has it and he has it. Um, the second thing that you want to make sure you take a copy of if this applies to you is your children's school report card school record and or their last report card from the school because when you get to school some of the private schools that you go to i don't think the government schools really care but in the private schools uh they may ask you or they may place your child in a grade that they think is comparable to his age they don't necessarily go so much by 
his uh, academic ability as he matches age. So if he's in grade two, if he's age 12, he should be in this grade by now. If he's uh, 10 years old, he should be in this grade. If she's 14, she should be in this grade. But academically, especially if you have a smart child, a gifted child, a very smart child, they may have, in some cases, even skipped a grade, okay? And it does happen. Uh, I've actually recommended I've actually recommended students skip a grade because the grade was just too easy for them. It wasn't challenging at all, and they will be better served in a higher grade. Um, I've done this once or twice in my teaching career, about once or twice in my teaching career with really, really exceptionally bright students. Also, if you have children that are taking like AP courses and stuff like that, I mean, his level at 14, he's taking college prep courses. <laughs> you know what I mean? She's taking college prep courses, so she's not going in grade nine. She's not going in grade nine. She passed grade nine level in her academia long ago. So you need to be able to prove that so that you can get your children placed in the proper grade levels where they're supposed to be. Um, that's the second thing. The third thing you should take with you is, is that you make sure you take with you is extra passport pictures. Extra passport pictures. I'm going to give you two cases in which you need to be very aware of, depending on where you're going, because not all passport pictures are created equal. If you're going, for example, Bahrain, I can only speak from my personal experience in the countries I landed in. So in Bahrain, Tanzania, Saudi Arabia, the typical two inch by two inch background, two inch by two inch with a white background, that's all you're going to need. I would recommend taking at least eight pictures, eight, because... Uh, in most cases, like for your comma, for your uh, work permit, for your maybe for your medical stuff, maybe for your school ID or whatever, most agencies will require at least two pictures. So they keep one picture. Uh, they keep one picture to put with the actual document you're going to carry with you, and then the other one is kind of on file. Like if you need to renew or something like that, they make you another one. You want to make sure you have at least at least eight. Everybody's going to demand two, three pictures. Okay, in Kuwait you want to keep about 15, 16 pictures because they want four pictures of everything for your identification, for your comma, for your work permit. Now, Kuwait is different because in Kuwait, you need the two inch by two inch passport photo with a blue background. Are you listening? A blue background. White backgrounds in Kuwait are not accepted for documentations. You have to have a blue background, okay? Not a navy blue, but like a regular sky blue, you know, kind of background, uh, a royal blue, royal blue background, okay? Make sure you have at least 16 copies, 16, because Kuwait wants four of everything. 16 passport pictures. They're going to give it to you in a little envelope, stuff that envelope with all those pictures and just keep it with you. When I, The first time I went to Bahrain, that helped me immensely. Uh, because I, I needed two pictures for everything that I need to do. So I took the pictures before I left. And that way I already had them to give to them. So I didn't have to go to find a studio and to have, you know, to pay and all. Because you want to spend as little money as possible when you first arrive. Because you don't know how much money you're going to need to spend. And you will spend more money than what you're supposed to spend in the first year. Because you don't know where to go. You don't know where the bargains are. You don't know the areas and the districts and the streets and the shops that you can get things a little less expensive. Now, many places, many places in the Middle East, they they're kind of like cookie cutter. So whatever the price is here at the at the beginning of the street, all those shops charge the same price to the end of the street. But if you go to another area, you might find a slight difference in price. You might even be able to negotiate. It just depends. Okay. So you want to make sure that you're spending as little money as possible when you first arrive. And things like that, they take small little bites out of your budget, okay? And then before you know it, what happens is you're waiting to get paid. And you don't want to be in a situation where you are nearly out of money before you've gotten your first paycheck. That's a very bad situation because if the school is late with your pay or there's a problem with your pay or you're not paid on time or not paid at all, you know, now you are in a bad situation from the very get go. And that's going to make a very negative impact on the way you view this process of Hydra. OK, so have enough money to take with you um, to sustain you, I would say, even for the first two months and plan on not getting a check. Plan on not getting paid on time. So that way, if you get it, mashallah. If you're not, you're not disappointed. You got enough to hold you. 
okay? So those passport pictures are very, very important. Um, when you do take passport pictures and you are overseas, make sure that you get the negative. Make sure that you get and keep the negatives because when you have the negatives, the process is not as, as, as expensive. It's probably about half the amount that you would pay. So make sure you keep the negatives to those and they will just make copies out of the negatives as long as you haven't had any major changes to your uh, appearance in terms of you know facial hair and stuff like that. Um, and that's pretty much it. So make sure you keep a copy of your medical records, your school records for your children, and uh, as many passport pictures as you can, at least eight, but optimum will be 16, 16 pictures away. Now, wherever you go, you've got pictures to prove and establish yourself. Okay. Lastly, as we uh, can conclude in this short video, do me a favor. If you know somebody on TikTok, uh, Facebook, Instagram, on YouTube, Twitter, LinkedIn, and you know people that are trying to make Hydra, all other Muslims are trying to make Hydra, they may not be aware of this channel. So if you could share this video with them after you like and subscribe, I would really, really appreciate it. Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.